Welcome back to part three of the magazine summer special, where in just a moment we'll have Graham Little in his speedos. Yes, but before that treat, I've been joined now by another handsome young man here, Shane Todd. Now, most of you, though, will know Shane like this as Mike McGoldrick. Yeah, you know, naturally, a lot of people ask me about Rory McIlroy because, you know, we're the same sort of age. You know, we're both well new. We, you know, we're both sort of up there, you know, in terms of fame. And, uh, you know, I, fair play to Rory, you know, I haven't seen him in a long time. Um, you know, he's got a busy schedule. Answer my, answer my calls, McElroy. Well, that was Mike, but I think we'll talk to Shane first. Is that all right? It's fine. I just kind of want to see Graham Little in the speedos. Uh, Would you want to just move on and get to that yeah, point? Fine. You'll have to wait. <laughs> That's fine. I'm looking forward to that. This Mike McGoldrick thing, how did it all start? Um, I think it, the, the seeds were shown a long time ago. I started working in Coltrow Yacht Club as a dishwasher when I was like 16. So I encountered a lot of people from a very sort of middle class world. And then whenever I started doing comedy, people always say like, do what you know. And I sort of drew on that a bit. And the character was born after a few uh, chats with my mates about what, what should he wear and what would he look like and what would he say. And then we just started making videos and, and sort of took off from there. It's absolutely hilarious. You've been likened to a young, well, I suppose Steve Coogan, Alan Partridge. Is that someone you, that you would emulate? Yeah, that's a, that's a hero of mine. I don't know if I'm anywhere near that level now, but um, it definitely is a, a, a take on a character. And I suppose they're similar and the character's a bit tragic, but thinks they're amazing and has big grand ideas. So yeah, maybe quite similar. The reviews have been really good so far and that's definitely where you're heading. That's what you want to be. And that started at an early age. You, you told your parents at what, 18, that that's what I want to do. Yeah, it was about 18 and just said to them, look, I've got no other prospects. They, they agreed. <laughs> and um, I was like, I'm just going to go into stand up. And they were, they were really, really supportive of it. Again, they kept emphasizing the fact that there was probably no other option for me. <laughs> um, I, I was washing dishes at that point. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, I just took the decision to sort of do it then. It was more of a hobby, but I knew it was going to take up a lot of my time. And it quickly became a passion. And, a couple of years after that, I said to them, I'm, I'm going to do it full time, and they've been absolutely brilliant about it. Well, the internet and the social media, it's brilliant, isn't it, just for a platform? And over the summer during the World Cup, you did something pretty special. Tell us about it. It, it was never intended to be. I, I was in the garden, and my dad was cutting the grass, and um, I just tried to, there's football there, and my dad was about 12 feet away, so I just tried to kick it in his head. Uh, mainly because do. I don't like him very much, and um, <laughs> it was meant to hurt him, but people sort of saw the lighter side of it. And uh, I, I uploaded that to Facebook, I recorded it. And then we said for every day of the World Cup, I would have a go at trying to hit him in the back of the head. But there was serious support for uh, hitting my dad on the head. Like people would just stop me in the streets of Hollywood and just really spur me <laughs> on. To, he has a lot of enemies basically in the town. Um, and that's from his actions in the past. But um, So many goes did it take to finally get it? It took me nine goes to hit him. There was uh -huh. quite a lot of close ones and a few not so close ones. Um, and then when I hit him, genuinely thought I killed him by the way he went down. <laughs> Um, but it was good to, it was good to actually hit him. So many hits did you actually get on the internet, let alone hit your dad's head? Just over 20,000 hits, but he can he can tell you to the exact figure on the R every R, pretty much. Oh, yeah, well, OK. Now, also, let's go back to Mike McGoldrick and the rugby, because Ulster Rugby have really taken you to their hearts. I'm wondering now, should we bring a bit of Mike in and leave Shane behind? Because there have been big changes in Ulster Rugby uh, recently. We've got uh, David Humphreys gone, Mark Anscombe gone. What would Mike make of these uh, trouble at Mill? So you would just say to the people, you know, as long as the big man's on board, uh, times are going to be good. Uh, we'll bring back the glory days and, uh, you know, a bit of cava in the water bottle and uh, we're laughing. <laughs> OK. Well, cava always helps. Mike, thank you for that in-depth analysis. And you can report back, too, that the future is bright when it comes to Ulster rugby because the talent out there is incredible. We had this young man on the magazine very recently. Impressive. And Tommy Bo thinks so, too. Take a look. Impressive, isn't it? <laughs> you could do with him. Wow. So, Mike, what did you think of that? Pretty impressive? Uh, you know, he's, well, it's all right. You know, he's 13. Let's see when he gets to 26 if he still has the same, you know, confidence. That's all I'd say. Life's harsh. Oh, I tell you, get him on the team now. We need him. Thank you very much, Mike McGoldrick. Have you ever had to take a seaweed bath to relax your aching muscles after a heavy game? Who bought an offer? Yes, well, we can, uh, you can ask Graham Little about it because recently we sent Graham to find out a bit more about the healing effects of seaweed on aching muscles. And he loved it so much that he's moved to the coast now and apparently he's collecting seaweed for his baths every day. And this is how it started. <laughs> 